Peter Milliman, uh, players Jordan Dobiak, Jake Palmer, and Christian Knight. We'll start out with an opening statement from the head coach. We'll then ask questions of the student athletes and then follow up with questions of the head coach. Coach Milliman. I would probably start just by uh, congratulating Maryland uh, and, and giving them all the credit they deserve for winning this game. They did an outstanding job. Um, you know, really earned the victory. Um, you know, played consistent, played strong, and, and did their part. Um, you know, on our end, I'm, I'm more than anything. I'm just uh, I'm, I'm sorry to be done uh, this season with this group. Uh, I mean, it's a special group uh, since we got together. Um, about a year ago now, uh, and talked about what we wanted to do for a senior year, and um, you know couldn't be prouder of the effort, the leadership of these these guys, you know, 11 seniors that um, you know really gave everything they had for this program. So uh, to be in the situation we're in is disappointing. Um, you know, we were hoping we'd get another week together, but um, I think we made some good plays and some bad plays, and, and at the end of the day, left uh, our hearts on the field. And I couldn't, I couldn't ask for anything else. NPS Nonprofit Services has the technology and know how to achieve your nonprofit goals. We have all the tools that you need for your nonprofit to be successful, including tech support, consulting, development strategies, and business continuity to make sure your data is safe on prem or in the cloud anywhere all the time. Call NPS at 877-797-8776. We're easy to reach and easy to work with. Questions for student athletes? Uh, Patrick Stevens from Lacrosse Magazine. Jordan, third quarter obviously did not go the, the way you guys wanted it to. Just what was kind of the frustration on offense as uh, they continued to kind of pull away there? Yeah, I mean, uh, at halftime, we really wanted to come out and uh, you know give it all we had that, that second half. And usually we're pretty good on the third quarter. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, it just didn't go our way that quarter. We see 5 0 them. But, uh, you know, I thought we clawed back in the fourth quarter and we, you know, we left it all out there when it's all said and done. And uh, I'm just proud of this group. Uh, Dylan McDevitt with the Cornell Daily Sun. Uh, Jake, you've been um, you know, one of the leaders on this team for your whole four years here, as you all have. Um, talk a little bit about what this means, you know, your last game here, and um, you know, how you guys think the, the effort went today. Um, yeah, I'm really happy with how we uh, finished at the end. You know, there were some ups and downs. We didn't play specifically well in the third quarter, but um, to keep on clawing back in the fourth quarter, just trying to go one goal at a time was, um, was great to see. And just uh, can't help think about a quote that uh, Coach Stevens said when he was a senior, um, when he when we lost all, and he said, "I want to trade a win today um, for for those memories in the locker room with those guys." And um, I truly believe that. Uh, I love each and every each and every one of them, and uh, we we made some great memories over the years. And it's great that we got um, back to where Cornell should be, and um, I'm just. Uh, Happy uh, that I could do it with them. Jake Scott Gilmore with the Diamondback. What were some of the offensive struggles? What do you have to overcome in that second half when they seemingly took Jeff Teed out of the game? Um, um, yeah. Well, they they were shutting Jeff, and uh, we have we have confidence in um, the other guys that are there on offense. Um, they're good players, and they're good at playing five on five. I think um, defensively, it was just hard to get a stop and uh, stop the bleeding um, in the initial part of that third quarter, and couldn't really uh, get our offensive ball and get them in a rhythm. And you saw, um, I think, and towards in the second quarter and the fourth quarter, when, when we're getting our offensive ball, they get in a rhythm and they start finding um, good shots. And I think we just weren't able to do that in the third quarter. Uh, Christian Jeff Shannon, Inside Cross Magazine. What were you? Um, what was Maryland doing offensively, uh, especially during the, the, their hot run that was giving uh, you guys defense trouble? It seemed like they were getting uh, pretty close onto the crease with some of their moves. Yeah, they were uh, mainly just doing a good job behind the cage, uh, setting picks on the goal line, and then setting picks behind the cage and and working around that, and then 
you know, their pick man would slip sometimes and, and they would just back away and, and dump it to the guy on the crease. Uh, it was tough to, to kind of deal with and we tried to adjust and you know, it kind of seemed like they had uh, all the answers uh, to everything we could with them. Any other questions for the student athletes? All right, questions for the head coach? Coach, um, Paul didn't start taking face-offs until much later in the game when he started taking a lot of them. Um, what was the reasoning behind uh, keeping him out until the end there? Uh, he's not 100% healthy. Um, he hasn't been for a while. He's separated his shoulder uh, a few weeks back, and uh, he's been working his way back in. Um, you know, We didn't think he was going to be healthy enough to take a um, – bulk of the face-offs, so we went into the game the same way we have the last few, just knowing that we'd have a few options, we'd use what we could, and then if um, Paulie was one of those options, we would put him in there when we could, and um, you know, we threw him in there, I think he took the third or fourth face-off, uh, and didn't look good early, um, so you know, we, we kind of kept our same mentality, we were just going to keep moving guys around, but uh, I think he... Um, you know, he, he just he manned up at the end of the game and realized that you know he was just going to have to play through an injury if he wanted to make an impact. And um, you know, I really respect the effort and, and the work that he's put in to get back to this point because it's not easy taking um, faceoffs of all positions with a separated shoulder uh, and competing against one of the best teams in the country doing it. And uh, you know, the fact that he was able to give us some some good co uh, competition there and give us some good ground balls is really a credit to him and the, and the guys that he plays in that group with. But uh, I'm just really proud of the effort. You know, face-offs have been a, a hurdle for us uh, for a while, and um, you know, it's just uh, it, it's part of the game. You know, we got to keep getting, uh, fighting and get better at it. <coughs> Patrick, coach, uh, I know Pete's been shut off in the past. Do you think that threw you guys off with your offensive rhythm today, or was it more stuff, other stuff they were doing, or simply not having the ball as much? Not having the ball is a big part of uh, not scoring goals, um, so I would say that that is is probably uh, uh, you know one of the top contributors. Um, you know, Jeff being shut is not new. Uh, it's been it's been happening for two years. Um, you know, he was shut the third game of his college career when he was a freshman. I mean, it's not it's not something that's new to us. Um, there's things that we do to deal with it. There's sometimes we just think our honestly we think at times our better option is to play around him and, and, and without him because the five on five situation, a lot of teams are just not really comfortable playing defense in that environment. And, and I think a lot of the goals we scored today, although it doesn't show up on the stat sheet, those were part of uh, Jeff being shut. And um, I'm not oblivious to the fact that he's one of the best players in our game and, and we are much better offensively with him touching the ball. Uh, but as you can see in probably some of the early parts of the game, when we make that the game plan to get Jeff the ball, we probably struggle more than anything else. And so we've, we've kind of fought the last few weeks to find a rhythm uh, with him being shut so consistently. Um, it hasn't been as consistent as it has the last few games where teams are just kind of conceding. They'll play five on five uh, and, and take their lumps with it. So, um, you know, the, the, the rhythm is definitely a big part of it. Because he's not, um, you know, he's not like a lot of players where he's best when he picks the ball up off the end line and dodges his guy. He's best when the ball's moving and he gets to uh, make some plays off ball. Um, so it, it's probably more realistically that, that they're shutting an off ball player and, and um, we need to find ways to get him the ball there. So, um, you know, the good part is that we've got two more years with him and he's going to continue to develop and we're going to continue to uh, write better offense for, for him to get opportunities. And I think. Um, maybe some of the rhythm early was a, was a, a struggle because we were getting the ball rarely, and when we did, um, I don't know if we were capitalizing on enough opportunities. You know, just it, we didn't we didn't find our groove early. You know, we had probably as many looks. I don't know how many shots we had in the first quarter, but um, you know, we had a few looks in the first half that I thought are usually pretty good looks for us, and um, and they didn't fall. So um, those could be tough. Hey, Coach, Jason Dumas, WDBM Sports. Uh, I know you probably haven't had much time to think of this because you're busy with this group, but you have the interim tag as the head coach. Do you know Cornell's timeline moving forward and what your role will be? I don't. Uh, I'm excited that uh, I got a chance to coach this team this year, and uh, we will figure out what happens after this, but it's not, um, 
and it has not been on the top of my priority list. Yeah. Bruce Posner from CBS Sports Radio in Baltimore. Uh, Coach, uh, what special defense did you have for Connor Kelly today? He, he only scored one goal, but more important, he only had three shots. That's mm -hmm. very unusual. Mm -hmm. uh, it's Jake. It's a, it's a pretty good defense. Fair enough. That's what we did. We put 34 on Connor Kelly and he did a good job. Back. Coach, John Johnson, Spectrum News. Uh, you took over the team after they had back-to-back -back losing seasons. Earlier in the year, you and I spoke, you talked about how the culture changed. That was the one thing you wanted to implement. These guys sitting next to you obviously had a big part about a part of that. You talk about them being big and that in the, in the culture change for you guys. Yeah, there's um, there's no doubt that, that that was the biggest priority going into this year. Um, you know, these guys have been here for a, a few years and have seen uh, some of the ups and downs. Um, they are guys that really. Uh, embrace what it means to be a Cornell lacrosse player and, and the tradition and the history of this program and um, you know I think they really um, you know took it personal that they wanted to make this an impact season and not just one for them not just one where they win some games or, or score some goals or whatnot I think these guys really wanted to make sure that um, it was done the right way at Cornell and um, you know they in every possible way led the charge led the change um, and put uh, a great season together of um, you know leadership and and chemistry and um, you know just coordination around the facility around the locker room you know being uh, being accountable and um, you know taking pride in, in doing things the right way you know and I don't honestly I don't think any of us up here had any idea what our expectations were on the field um, but it wasn't a priority um, at all really at any point this year. Uh, we just want to make sure we did it the right way. Uh, Cornell's a, a proud uh, tradition, a proud program, and um, you know, doing it the right way means a lot to us. And, and these guys deserve every ounce of the credit for what they put in. And, and this is just three of the eleven. I, I think every every one of them deserves the credit. And, and it would be great if they were up here to, to get their recognition because they all did an incredible job of of you know imparting some change on this program. Any other questions for Cornell? All right, thank you guys. Congratulations on a great season.